Okay, guys, this is our concept five, graphene radicals. And we're only going to have to learn how to graph two types of radicals, the square root function and the cubic root function. So let's take a look at the first one, the square root function. The graph of the square root function looks like this. Notice that we have a domain restriction. And you may wonder why we have a domain restriction. I'm going to put this up in the corner over here so we can, you can look at it while I talk about it. It has a domain restriction here because at zero, you can't take the square root of a number smaller than zero. So it starts off at zero. And then we would make a T table, as we did before, X and Y. And we're going to pick another value. If we put a zero in there, we get the square root of zero is zero, hence we start there. Then we pick another value. In this case, they picked one, and the square root of one is one, and we graph that. And then we could also take like the square root of four, and we would get two, and we would graph that point right there. Once we have our three points, we draw our graph. This is the standard form of the, or the parent form of y equals the square root of x. It's called the parent function. Now, if you remember correctly, when we did absolute value, the graphs shift, okay? The general form for our equation is y equals the square root of x minus h plus k. This might look familiar to you because if you remember correctly we did when we did absolute value it was y equals the absolute value of x minus h plus k. And then sometimes we would see an a in the front. The value in the front, if you remember correctly, was the steepness. Notice these are exactly the same. So you're not really learning anything new. When we transfer an equation, if you remember in the absolute value, this shifted the, the graph left or right, and this shifted the graph up or down. By the same token, with our square root function, the h value is going to shift it left or right, and the k value is going to shift the graph up or down. Again, remember we always did the opposite. So, for example, let's look at the graph of the equation y equals the square root of x plus 2. Here's what the graph looks like. Notice what, happened, what has happened. The graph has shifted up two places, as indicated in the equation. Every point on the graph shifts up two spaces. Let's take a look at another one. What if instead of putting the plus 2 on the outside of the radical, we took, and instead we put a plus 2, 3 on the inside of the radical. The square root of x plus 3. This is what the equation, the graph of the equation looks like. Notice what happens is that each one shifts over three spaces. So 0 would shift over three spaces to the left. Now remember we're going to the negative side because we always do the opposite of what's in here. So this graph, this point would shift over one, two, three spaces. And then this point would shift over one, two, three spaces. And then we would draw a line. This is because we now have the graph y equals square root of x plus 3. It's shifting to the left. Now, what happens in the case when it shifts both ways? So let's look at that graph. 
y, oops, sorry, y equals the square root, okay, and then we have our x um, minus 2 minus 3. What do you think this means about our graph? This tells us it's going to shift two units to the positive section, so to the right, and down three units. This is what the graph of this equation looks like. Here was our original point. It shifted over two units and down one, two, three units. This point shifted over two units and down one, two, three units. All this is doing is causing shifts, just as it did in our absolute value, so it's nothing new. The only thing you have to be concerned about is um, what's, where, where the shift is in the numerator, uh, under the radical or outside the radical. Under the radical shifts it left and right, outside the radical shifts it up and down. Now you might wonder what happens if we have a negative in front. Y equals negative square root of X. Well, this was our original equation. And if it's a negative square root of X, if you remember when we had a negative absolute value, all that simply does is flip the value to the other side. So now, this new graph is y equals negative square root of x. The original value flips over the x-axis. If you have any questions, please ask. And we're going to do the cubic function next. So let's look at those. The cubic root function, not the cubic function, the cubic root function. So we're going to have y equals the cubic root of x. That function looks like this. Someone when I, in class pointed out that it kind of looks like the um, x cubed function, but it's turned on its side, and it does. Okay. Notice, again, we could use a t-table to find our initial values. So we would have x and y. x cubic root of 0 is 0, hence the middle point. The cubic root of 1 is 1, and the cubic root of negative 1 is negative 1. That hence our three points. The same thing's going to happen here as happened with our square root function. If we, if we change the value in some way, the function, for instance, if we add 2 to the outside, our graph will shift from the blue cubic root of x, and it will shift up two spaces. Same type of graph as the original, it just shifted upward. So I bet you can guess what's going to happen on the next one. What happens if the plus 2 is under the radical? Yep, you're right. It's going to shift two spaces, but this time it's going to shift two spaces. Remember, we do the opposite when it's under the radical, so we shift in two spaces to the left. So every point would shift two spaces to the left. Finally, what happens if we put a negative in front of our cubic root? Negative cubic root of x. That graph's going to look like this red graph. Notice it's the exact same as the blue graph, except it has been flipped, because the negative indicates that you're flipping it over the x-axis. Graphing radical functions, at least the cubic and the square root, are pretty easy. So if you have any questions tomorrow in class, please ask me. Remember, you only have to do the evens or the odd problems. But hopefully you want to do them all. See you tomorrow.